Hey everybody. Before we get started on the meat and bones of today's tutorial, just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who's subscribed. Um, I really appreciate it. The channel is uh, pretty much new. It's I started it up in the last month here and we've gone from about four subscribers up to tickling 300 or so. And a special thank you to Brian Ashmore uh, for the generous shout out that he did on his channel on his last video. Uh, if you're here because of Brian, thank you for, uh, for checking me out and uh, listening to his recommendation. Uh, I'll try and do him proud, but I love uh, Brian's channel. Uh, in a very short time, he's become a good friend, and uh, I do appreciate it. All right, well, anyways, thank you all, and uh, on to the tutorial. Welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm going to do a demo for you that's the second in a series of whimsical note cards uh, that I'm doing. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of a strategy that I have for when I go to these uh, different art events to make sure that you have something that's in everyone's budget. Not everyone can afford a real expensive painting, but everyone likes to take something home. And note cards are the perfect way to make that happen. Okay, well... Let me just start by showing you the different, uh, couple of the different sets that I have of these note cards. This first set here is a set of four. That's usually what I do. I, I can sell them individually or I can sell them in sets. Uh, and this set happens to be scenes that are well known uh, here in my hometown of Prescott, Arizona. So if I take and open these up, there are four different note cards. of pretty well-known scenes from around here, uh, scenes that people would know. And I do, a, I do the only tent show that I do is here in, in uh, my hometown. Uh, and so I make sure to have these. And these are serious ones. And then the other set that I have uh, is this set, and it's a set of whimsical cards. There are four different ones. And um, one of the, the cards that I have is this card here with uh, with this bear. Let's see if I can get it in here. All right, and turn it so you can see it. All right, everybody knows that scene of the salmon jumping and the, just about in the bear's mouth or in the bear's mouth. Well, uh, I did one and uh, right here it, it uh, tells you what the what that salmon is thinking. So, <laughs> I'm going to do a series of cards co called the Oh Crap series. Uh, just predicaments that people get into or animals get into. So that is what we're doing today. And these cards are really terrific if you're looking to help uh, get rid of some of the expenses that you have in doing these shows. You know, there's always entry fees. There's the time and money to get to the shows, set up uh, that sort of thing. And um, I have found that uh, on several occasions, these uh, note cards and the smaller uh, pieces that I have, I do a full set of uh, five by seven original art, either in pencil or charcoal pencil or watercolors that are framed very simply and sell for under a hundred dollars. So this is, uh, this is definitely something that uh, has helped me in, to be able to uh, go to these shows and uh, defray some of the costs. And in some instances, completely pay for the show. And uh, you start with a clean slate and uh, everything else you sell after that's gravy. But anyways, I'll show you that uh, very simple front. It's a five by seven. Inside is uh, empty. And then the back has my name and logo on it. So anyways, enough of that. Let's get into doing this uh, second concept. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the thumbnails uh, that I did along the way. I like doing different layouts, and so I started with a, with a vertical, and um, this one was a pretty narrow view of uh, just the outhouse, of, and uh, I thought I'd have um, some trees in the background, and then uh, just the outhouse surrounded with these uh, 
with these rattlesnakes. And um, of course, the gun that would be hanging on the side of the tree uh, limb there. And, uh, you know, this is just to get the general idea down, maybe a little bit of the, uh, of the composition, uh, but everything's fluid at this point. You want to keep it real loose. Don't worry too much about uh, whether one part of it works or not. You're just trying to get the idea across uh, and uh, you don't spend too much time on it. You know, maybe, maybe a few minutes to five minutes a piece on these. Uh, and you take a little bit of time along the way to kind of stop and decide what should go where. And, uh, and that works out pretty well. Um, so uh, just keep on adding the snakes in here. And that's about it for this one. Uh, I think it's all in there. Can't do too much. So let's go on to the next one. This one I decided to do as a horizontal scene. Uh, the uh, outhouse would be along the right-hand side. There would be uh, fewer snakes on this one, I think. And um, this one, you're actually going to be able to see more of the background, more of the fact that he's out in the west. He's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we're going to go ahead and change the, the actual design of the outhouse as well. This has a peaked roof where the other one uh, just had kind of a slanted roof. So I just continue to work this. Uh, and uh, after I get it far enough along that I feel like it's working, I slip it underneath another sheet of paper and then I work it out a little bit farther. I do that as many times as I need to to feel like I kind of got the sketch and the idea down. The watercolor paper I'm using today is Fluid 100. It's a cold press finish at 140 pounds, a 12 by 16. Not real expensive but uh, works really well. This is the Pentel Pocket Brush. It has wonderful uh, brush tip to it, very flexible, which give you great thick and thin lines. Oops, well, apparently somebody didn't clean out their fountain pen very well and uh, it's contaminated my black ink. So, time to start over. Hey, it happens, what are you gonna do? But this time I decided to go ahead and do a water test just to make sure that my inks were as waterproof as I believe they were. And here's a, uh, a non-waterproof ink and what it does. So now that I'm starting with a completely clean pen, I can go ahead and, and do this again. Oh boy.
Now I've taken my watercolor paper and I have soaked it in a tub for a little bit and stretched it by, uh, by stapling the edges. And uh, now we get into the fun part. Uh, I'm going to start by having everything, just about everything, covered with a thin, light wash of yellow. If uh, something's in the sunlight, generally there's going to be yellow in it anyways. And uh, this is a nice way of having, uh, having some extra tones in there and uh, having something that kind of unifies the whole look. Um, so I start by uh, doing that. Add a little bit of uh, the orange into the butte. It's off into the background. And then slowly start adding the green color. Now there's going to be a lot of green in this painting with the trees and the grass. Um, but er since everything dries lighter than you put it down, um, you really don't have to worry too much about it being too dark on the first pass. I know that it's going to take several passes in order to get it where I want it to go. And that's a great thing about watercolor is, uh, you know, you, you put it down in stages, mixing some oranges into the tree colors and the shrub colors to help unify everything. Most of that will be gone by the time uh, I get finished. So just trying to cover everything kind of as quickly as I can to get a general feeling as to how things are going to go. Well, I know that watercolor has this reputation for being, oh, somewhat hard to work with. But, um, you know, I really find that if you do a little bit of planning ahead, which you should with any kind of painting, you know where you're going, uh, and uh, you pay attention and keep a, uh, a nice little wad of paper towels in your hand, uh, you should be just fine. And there's always um, gouache that you can use to go over the top of it, especially with something like this. I mean, if it was an actual just watercolor with no line work over the top of it, it would be more difficult, but still not terrible. Now, before I started doing this piece, I had a, a general idea as to what I wanted to do with the color. Uh, and I think uh, the best way to describe it is I knew that there was going to be a lot of green in here because I wanted the, um, the rattlesnakes to be able to jump off the page. And since they were going to be brown or more warm, I needed to use something that was cooler. And that's why I decided to make sure that I had a lot of really bright, vibrant green in there. The, um, the outhouse itself, I have uh, in my head that I'm going to make it kind of a sun bleached red. So it'll be mostly gray with warms and warms and cools uh, with a little bit of um, oh, pink or red showing through here and there. And uh, so that's kind of where my head's at and where I'm uh, trying to take this. Now the colors of everything Become less saturated as you uh, as you go back in the distance. Uh, that's by design. I want that horse back there. I want you to obviously be able to see him, but at the same time, uh, I don't want him uh, too important. And so uh, I made sure to to knock back the intensity of those colors. Now on the outhouse, uh, I'm trying to get the subtle mixing of those colors so that it looks faded and old. Uh, I'll add a little bit of spattering to it. But also, I need to remember to try and keep the value of the lighthouse or outhouse lighter than the shrubbery that's going on around it so that, so that it doesn't get lost in what's around it. We're coming down to home stretch now. It's about time to uh, start putting on that rusted tin roof with all the wonderful oranges and in uh, yellows and browns. And um, once I get done with that, it's really just a matter of taking and adding a little bit more um, line work in the buzz that the snake is, uh, is doing. Once I got done putting down all the watercolors, uh, I let them dry for a few minutes. Well, use my blow dryer 
and then went in with some of my color pencils to add some details here and there. Uh, and then once that was done, I let it set for an hour or two, came back, and uh, added any details or a cleanup that I needed to do with once my that wash. Was done, I scanned it into Photoshop, cleaned it up, made sure it was uh, the way I liked it, and then this is what we ended up with. All right, well, that's about it. Uh, I really had fun. I hope this helped a little bit and that uh, it helped you to kind of learn a different technique. Um, the note cards idea is something that I've been doing for a little while and it really seems to help. Uh, people love to be able to take home a piece of their favorite artists. Uh, so anyways, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Uh, like the video, click that like button, smash it down if it's uh, something that you liked. It really does help me to know that I'm on the right track. And uh, comment down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thanks. See you down the road.